Hi everybody, my name is Haley and I am one of your TAs for this Psych 101 course for those of you who may not remember me. Today I'm going to be talking about stress, but more specifically what stress really is, or as much as I can fit in this short video. We like to think of stress as, you know, pretty automatically this terrible negative thing that we experience, when in reality it's actually pretty beneficial for us in some ways. Though stress can be something that we often start noticing when um, we've reached an exceedingly high amount of stress or we're starting to feel like maybe we've reached our limit. And this is where a lot of negative stereotypes can come from. So I'm here to tell you that you can actually make stress your friend and it can actually be something that you benefit from, particularly within a school setting. So we all kind of know what stress is because we've in one way or another experienced this in our own lives. And stress is just your body's natural reaction to the pressures of certain situations or events that we're a part of. And this can be in your own personal life, it can be in school, it can be in anything. And it can be um, both physiological and psychological like we've been talking about in this course. So it can look like a whole bunch of different things. And that's one of the reasons why it's kind of hard to target because um, a lot of common indicators of stress often include like increased heart rate, shortness of breath, feelings of anxiety or lack of control. You can feel muscle tension or shakiness, but the list can go on and on and it covers a multitude of different areas. So something that's very important for me to realize is that these reactions of stress can look very different from person to person. So not everyone reacts in the same way, and not everybody has the same tolerance level, and that's completely okay, because we're all different people, and we're all going to experience things in different ways too. So it's really important for you to know personally um, how you're feeling when you start to feel like you're reaching a level of too much stress. One way that has been really helpful for me in just beginning to identify when I reach too much stress in the, uh, is actually through this diagram that I have for you guys. And this is a performance and stress level scale. So it's um, basically essentially discussing how stress can be helpful and how it can start to actually hinder your productivity. So we start off with performance going up. So that's our little bell curve over here. And then at the bottom is our stress level. So it's gonna go from left to right from low all the way over here to high. So right here on our first one, we have what's called the underload stage. And this is when we kind of have a little bit too, too little stress, which is actually, it's actually a thing. You can have too little stress. Not too much is going on. You don't really have anything that's motivating you. And in this part, we can experience inactivity and laid back. This is where people can start experiencing feelings of lethargicness and, um, just procrastination because there's not too much. And then the next stage is optimum stress. So this is actually really good. This means that you have just the right amount for you of stress that's causing you to feel productive in all of your work. And um, it's a good amount of balance for you too. So it's not gonna be too little, it's not gonna be too much. But we start to lean a little bit over here towards fatigue when we get to the point of overload. So this is too much stress. This is the little red section over here. And in this section, we can experience exhaustion. So this is where you start to really identify, maybe you're feeling overwhelmed. Maybe you don't feel like you can handle all the work that you have or all the things that you've got going on. And it's just not something that you feel like you can juggle anymore. So that leads us to the final stage, and that's burnout. This is the worst place that you want to be. Burnout is just where you can't do anything, even remotely. This is where um, you can break down, you can have anxiety, you can have panic, um, anger. But when we reach burnout, we lose the capability of being productive and working at our optimum levels and succeeding in the things that we're working on. So I want you to really think about what characterizes these stages for you and what does it look like when you don't have enough stress so you're over here or what does it look like when you've got just that right amount and you're in that sweet spot for your productivity levels and then 
What does it look like when you're kind of nearing your limit and when you need to recognize that maybe it's time to take a step back or to breathe or do something to help alleviate that stress? And then finally, what does it look like when you reach the burnout stage? What does it look like when you've reached the point of complete overload and maybe it's time um, for you to reevaluate what you're doing? So that diagram was really, really helpful for me, um, particularly because I'm the type of person who struggles identifying when I've reached my point of complete exhaustion and I can just completely overlook all of these signs and all of these stressors that are going on in my life until all of a sudden I reach the point of, oh, I'm burned out and I don't know what to do. So one thing that's been really, really helpful in um, helping me lower my own stress levels um, and recognize my own stages is not only this um, performance scale that I've showed you, but I also have um, a particular exercise that I do. And I actually learned this in one of my classes. So it's called the 54321 senses grounding exercise. Some of you may have heard of this, but for me, you can do this anywhere that you want. But for me, particularly because I'm in Boise right now and I love the area and it's really nice outside, I go outside and I take a walk and um, I do these five things. So you're gonna start off with five. And five is, um, it's gonna be like your five senses. So the first one is sight. And you're gonna look around and five, or find five things that you can see. So right now I can see my laptop, I can see my little diagram, I can see um, a lamp and a couple of other things. But you're gonna look around and notice those five things. And then you can either think them in your head or you can say them out loud, whichever is easier. And then we're gonna go down to four. So this is the sense of touch. And you're gonna really pay attention to how your body's feeling at this point. So that can be um, things that you feel. It can be like the wind while you're walking. It can be how you're physically feeling, like maybe there's tension in your neck or maybe you're holding onto something and you can feel your, like your keys. Um, or maybe the weight of your backpack or how um, the ground is feeling on your feet when you're walking. Um, the next one is three, and that's hearing. I love this exercise particularly because of this. I get to go outside and I get to list three things that I can hear. And this can be like the river. It can be if you're in your room listening to music or um, your roommate's doing something or the people that you live with walking around, talking. And then number two is scent. So we're going to list two things that we can smell. And um, you're allowed to move to another spot or just um, just notice what you're smelling at that moment. And that can be um, like flowers when, if you're outside. It can be um, like a scent that you have in your room. But just listing two things that you can smell. And then the last is one, and that is taste. The last scent that is available in those five core senses for us. Um, and you're going to say something that you're tasting at the current moment. It could be like coffee, um, the residue that you, you get often, or it can be like mint or gum. Or if you happen to not think that you're tasting anything at that moment, you can just say something that you really enjoy tasting. So after that, I've completed my exercise and I take a really big deep breath and I practice just paying attention to my body and how I'm aware of things going on in my present moment. And that's something that it does exactly what the exercise is called. It's called a grounding exercise. And for me, that's very grounding. It helps me recenter and check in with myself and realize how I'm feeling um, both mentally and physically. It also helps you focus. So people who, um, like for me, one thing that I notice is like racing thoughts and I start to feel anxious and jittery. So I like to go walk and be a little bit more um, active when I'm stressed. So it can be something that can help you focus, can help you calm down those thoughts. And then if you're practicing your deep breaths, then you get to just practice relaxing your body and then you can um, take down your anxiety or stress levels and whatever you need to do. So that is everything that I have for you guys, but thank you for listening, and I really hope that was helpful to some of you. Have a good day, guys.